What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's video we're going to be testing out the three most downloaded uh, Revit plugins. So I thought this would be a cool topic so I took a look at the list of the three most downloaded plugins and then I wanted to filter them down to only the free plugins so all of you can test this out. Uh, and then finally it had to be a plugin that's an actual Revit tool because a lot of these are a link so a link between Revit and different software. For example the most downloaded plugin on the Autodesk App Store uh, is uh, a plugin that connects Revit with Lumion and that that wouldn't really work for this type of a tutorial. So I just found the ones that were actual Revit tools and the ones that I pick out, picked out was the Coins Auto Section Box, uh, the second one is the Align plugin and then finally we have the room finishing plugin. So I'm just going to be testing all of these out and giving you some of my comments and what I think about them and then you can get them if you if you think it's it's something that you, that's interesting for you. Uh, now before we start with that, speaking of plugins, uh, I actually have a plugin on BalkanArctic.com. So on my on my website, it's going to be the first link just below this video here and then also up in the cards. Now we have a new tab for plugins and I've actually teamed up with a plugin creator who has created this really cool uh, custom cabinetry uh, plugin for Revit. It's uh, It allows you basically to create kitchens, uh, cabinets, uh, bathrooms, offices, um, maybe some shelving for your living rooms, things like that. So it, it's really powerful, it gives you whole sets of different tools to create different ty types of things, especially for kitchens, I really like how it uh, works with kitchens. Uh, so I like to encourage you to check it out. So as I said, it's going to be the first link just below this video in the description. Okay, so without any further ado, let's jump straight into Revit. And here we are. So this is just one of my projects from my website from one of the courses. And this is where I'm going to be testing out the first one, the auto section box. So when you install all of these plugins, and they're all really simple to install, it's just a simple process, a few clicks and then you're done. Uh, make sure to restart Revit when you do that, so that's just one tip, just something to keep in mind. And then when you install them, uh, they're going to appear here in the add-ins tab. So here we have a panel for align, next we have a panel for coins uh, section box, and then finally here we have the room finishes uh, panel for that tool. So let's start off with the auto section box. So how does this work and what it does? So this is, well, as the name would suggest, for creating section boxes automatically. So how this works is basically you go to one of the floor plans, for example, you make a selection and it's going to ignore all of the annotations elements. So you make a selection like this, let's go to the 3D view, then you can go here to the add-ins, go to your auto section box and once you click you're going to get this little window just asking you which view you want to apply that section box to and it's just going to give you your 3D views. So I only have my 3D views here. So I can select this one, this is the active view, this is the one that we're viewing right now. Uh, next you have the size, now I really like this one, you can either specify a size of the section box like this, uh, so it's going to be 600 centimeters and that's kind of the the default setting, but also you can go element extends plus buffer. So that basically means that the section box is going to capture the elements and then give it a little buffer around that. So that's what this would do. So I actually prefer this one and yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'm just going to click OK and we have that section box now applied here and now we can take a look. Uh, now when you're looking around and using section box uh, section boxes like this, it, it's easy to kind of lose yourself inside of the model, so it's really good that they have this toggle option where you can actually turn it on and off, which I, I, I find kind of cool. And also I like this grow and shrink functions, so basically you increase the size of your section box or you decrease it. Now in some cases it's going to be useful, in some cases it isn't. Here for example it kind of swallowed up my floor, so I don't like that. But yeah, that's that's basically how that uh, <clears throat> how that function works. So you can use that. And obviously you can just uh, just click here and then you can select elements you want to section box further. Like this, I can click, I can hit finish. Again, it's asking me the same questions and now it captured that uh, that roof that I have specified. So 
it's it, it, you can either first select the elements and then click or you can first click on the tool and then specify the elements uh, it's really up to you uh, now it's fairly simple and straightforward now what I do like about this uh, tool what I find particularly cool is what it does with callouts so for example if I open up one of the sections here so let's open up the section one and let's say we want to create a callout here so I would go here to view I would go to callout create a callout like this let's say this is what they want a callout of this particular kind of connection between the the walls and the different roofs and uh, I am going to be creating this as a kind of a more detailed view but also I want a 3d view well you can actually just select this callout go to add-ins and click on the section auto section box and it's going to apply that callout basically or apply a section box to that callout section and it's going to look like this so it's a really quick way to kind of create that uh, create that uh, 3d detail by using this uh, this approach or using this tool so th this is really a function that I, I kind of find it kind of fascinating so there you go that's that's pretty much the whole functionality of uh, this tool as far as I've kind of researched it for this video and all in all I give it three stars Okay, let's then move forward and let's go then to the Align panel. This is the second uh, plugin that we have installed. So let me jump here to my second project, if I can only find it. Okay, here it is. So we're here inside of the second project and for these Align tools, it's basically similar tools. If you have ever, ever used uh, the Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator, it has tools like this. And I actually really like those in Illustrator, so I was quite uh, interested when I saw that it has kind of similar tools. So let me show you how this works. I'm going to take this column for example and let me copy that multiple times and I'm just going to arrange it kind of weirdly here inside of this model perhaps like that. And now let's say you want to organize this a little bit better. You can just select all of those, go to add-ins and then you can align them to certain points. So for example if I align this to the right they're all going to jump out to the kind of furthest one on the right. If I go back for a moment, uh, then I, let me go back here to the add-ins. I can do the same thing to the center. So it's just going to kind of figure out the geometrical center of all of these. And then it's going to kind of align them to the center. Uh, now this is kind of doing that vertically. Uh, this is basically doing that horizontally. So you have kind of both options there. So let's go here to the middle. There we go. So that's that does this. So that's basically how it works. It's pretty self-explanatory, pretty straightforward. Also, one thing that they like is the distribute horizontally and distribute vertically, which is uh, basically something like an array or not, not the, the array, but more like, you know, when you add a, a dimension and then hit EQ and then it equalizes the distances, this basically does that with selected elements. And it's a way faster way of doing that. So if you do that quite a bit, uh, this could really save you some time. So basically here, as you can see, the distances between these elements are definitely not equal and if I just go here to distribute horizontally it's going to equalize those like this now it's not parametric so if you move one the other ones will ignore that but that's basically what that tool does also it has these uh, tools here for tags so this is supposed to kind of help you figure out the tags and let me just delete this for a second. So first one is this arrange tags, which I find kind of fascinating. So if you go here to the properties and turn on the crop view, and if I just crop this a little bit, just like so, there we go. So I've cropped this and now I can just select these tags, go to add-ins and go to arrange tags. It's just going to arrange them on the outside of my crop. And I really like that. Uh, so that's that's a cool feature. Also, it has this un uh, untangle vertically and untangle horizontally. Now, on the on the website on the page where you download the plugin, they show you how it works and it looks all perfect. But for example, when I try it, and I'm sure I'm making a mistake somewhere, but if I select these and then go to finish, eh, it messes things up. So I'm guessing in some situations it is going to untangle things. I just haven't been able to replicate that. So also here we have the untangle horizontally, which does something. I'm guessing it's trying to kind of give it 
horizontal kind of distances so as you can see where this one stops this one starts and then where this one stops this one starts and it's doing that horizontally and then uh, vertically or yeah vertically it just does that vertically so uh, it's kind of trying to connect see how the bottom here and the top here are aligned and the same thing goes here I guess it's a little bit odd but I'm guessing in some situations it is useful so there you go that's the that's the all of the align tools and I'm just going to delete now all of these tags and turn off the crop view uh, and for this I'm definitely going to give it uh, a score of a couple of smiley faces okay moving forward uh, let's then go to the room finishes and this is actually my favorite one out of the out of the three so let me show you how this one works uh, basically if I go here to the 3d view uh, in a lot of cases uh, people in Revit or different companies when they're doing interior design things like that they would have one floor for the construction and then they would have like a separate floor on top for the finish so basically the separate floor kind of follows uh, follows just the, the edges of the walls things like that and also you have skirting board that's kind of the board that follows at the edge kind of masking out the rough edges of your flooring and this tool does both of that so let me show you how that works let's start with the floor finishes uh, now for both of these you have to create a new floor type for the floor finishes and a wall type for the skirting finishes so let's do that so first for the floor you go to the architecture tab you go to the floor tool you go to the generic floor edit type duplicate and duplicate and duplicate duplicate okay uh, I don't know how to speak today so let's call this one the wood floor click OK go into structure for the thickness let's go with 15 millimeters and then for the material let's search for some wood here so wood here we go so let's uh, we have flooring yeah let's go with flooring click OK OK again and now one thing when it comes to floors something that they found out as an issue in Revit if you create a new type and if you just exit out of this it's not actually going to create that new type so what you have to do is just create a small floor like this and then you finish and then you can just delete that floor it doesn't matter but it's going to save that type that's just something that I found out kind of working in Revit and finally one more thing for this tool for the uh, room finishes you actually have to have a room so it's not going to work unless you have a, a room so you have to go here to architecture room and then I'm guessing it's using the the room boundary here see how the, this room has that boundary it's using that to generate the geometry and also you have to be in the floor plan uh, if you're into 3d view in the side of a 3d view it's just going to ignore you so let's go back into level one and then let's go to add-ins go to floor finishes you click it's going to open up this annoyingly massive window so let's shrink this quite a bit uh, here you have the option to select all rooms in current view we just have one so that's that's okay uh, and then here you select the floor type which I have created that wood floor and then the the value the, the, the from value this is basically an offset that it has from the original floor uh, so basically you assign that to whatever the thickness is of the floor so in this case it's 15 millimeters so I'm just going to assign that and then I'm going to click OK and it seems like nothing has happened but if we go here to the 3d view you can see that we have that floor now created which is really cool okay and finally let me show you the uh, skirting board so for that uh, just like we've created this floor we have to create a new wall type so for the wall type what you want to do is go to the architecture tab go to the wall tool and then it's very self-explanatory duplicate let's call this one the wood wall uh, edit uh, let's make it 10 millimeters for this one material oak flooring that's okay okay there we go so once we have done this now I can go here to my uh, add-ins go to level one so again go to the floor plan you need to see the room in order to create this uh, go to skirting board again we get that annoyingly massive window which I like to shrink down as much as possible you find that wood wall that you have created uh, here you set up the height so let's say 120 millimeters all rooms and also you have the joint geometry which is just going to join that to the original wall and usually you want to have this turned on just everything looks nicer in section views so let's click OK 
wait for a few moments and now as you can see it appeared over here and also in the 3d view we get this and just because it follows that room outline as you can see it's going to go around the the column here and this column here and this is really good because uh, usually for this you would use uh, sweeps wall sweeps just included in the wall but then that wouldn't work in situations such as this one here or this one here it would just ignore you so and uh, yeah so that's that's something okay I just figured out that here it didn't generate I don't know why that's kind of annoying why didn't you do that but anyways that's how it works and also it creates this kind of weird material patch on top I don't know why and how that happened but if you have any idea please tell me in the comment section below so there you go uh, again as I said if you want to check out that really cool kitchen uh, or cabinetry uh, plugin for creating all sorts of different cabinetry please check out the link in the description so just below this video balkanarctic.com and there we have kind of all of the courses and but more importantly for, for this particular situation we actually have now a tab with plugins and currently we just have that one plugin for kitchens and cabinetry and everything else Thank you for watching guys make sure to check out my website balkanarctic.com for more uh, Revit courses uh, there I have over 120 hours of content uh, and I'm adding more each week make sure to subscribe for more videos and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well